Guys, it's me, B. Riley. Welcome back to the channel. You can find my name floating over there. Uh, if you want to follow on Instagram to get updates, uh, you know, on a semi-daily basis, or just some high-res pics that I usually take of guitars, or we talk about artists or anything like that. Um, but that being aside, let's go ahead and get down to business. Today we have an objective, and that is to install a kill switch on my Strat. Now this particular Strat I built about a year and a half ago and I built it myself, so I'm not too worried about uh, corrupting the market value of this guitar. I have absolutely no intention of selling this guitar. Unlike my other guitars, this is one that is going to be staying with me. Um, an excellent in-town luthier by the name of John Bonzer, who's also a very good friend, had really done an, uh, an exemplary job on the neck and I just couldn't let it go. So this thing's gonna be sticking with me. But that being said, I wanted to throw in a kill switch and the cool thing about throwing in a kill switch is it's a really quick project. Something you could take care of in less than an hour if you wanted to. Uh, but for the sake of filming, I'm gonna take my time and we're gonna sidestep. We're gonna do a kill switch, but we're also gonna show you how to kind of remotely mount it in a different position versus just jamming it under the pick guard and creating more things that you have to dodge every time you service it. I would like to keep the kill switch outside of the pick guard so that if anything goes south on it, or uh, I wanna service a particular part of the guitar. I don't wanna have everything in my face. I wanna compartmentalize it so that it can be serviced easily. Uh, so that's gonna be our project for today. We're gonna go ahead and crack on right about now because this video is gonna be a little bit shorter than the last one. And the next week we're gonna get back to the Jag, get you some sound clips and show you how that thing came out. Let's go to it. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need. Various tools, soldering iron, Draws a core solder. And uh, most importantly, you're gonna need this guy. Now, this little devil is a hardware store switch. You will not find this on guitar websites. Uh, using any uh, you know, eBay guitar kill switch search is gonna give you some pretty Mickey Mouse stuff that's pretty cheap. This is the only switch I've ever used for kill switches. And the reason is, is it's not designed for guitar work. Uh, it has a 120 volt AC rating at eight amps. So essentially what that means is, is while we might not be testing the parameters of this switch's particular electronic capacity, this does ensure that the internals are robust and really, really heavy. And the reason is this is designed to handle a significant amount of current. So the build quality is a lot better. Another thing I've got is I've got a truss rod cover that actually came off of the Aria Les Paul that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago. This is not the appropriate truss rod cover for that guitar. As a matter of fact, it barely covered the cavity. Um, so it just kind of became something extra that I threw in a drawer. It has the look of a guitar that is 30 or 40 years old. It's not purely stock. It's definitely got some things on it that are, are not factory. And I personally feel like this little guy might be exactly what I need. And here's the reason why. Um, it's discreet, it's back, and it's out of the way. And also another reason that I like this is, <clears throat> this particular placement is, this screams years ago. Because nowadays, most people are not in love with the idea of routing out a small hole on the top of the body or drilling a hole through and making a channel on the body. Um, so I like this idea because the plastic, the switch, and the look of the guitar is continuing in that I've been modified back in the 70s sort of way because the type of plastic this is and as uh, warped as it is and as rounded off as it is, is a, a very 1970s uh, garage modified look. And that's kind of what I'm going for. So what we're gonna do is first things first, we've got all the equipment that we need. We are going to drill a hole right here, drill three small holes for the pick guard, drill a hole in this piece of plastic, mount the switch inside of it, and then we are going to drill underneath 
in between on an angle, a channel that goes down to the actual jack plate. And then we just have to tap into that and I'll show you how to wire that in. Super easy, shouldn't be a problem getting it done in an hour or two. This project is one of those things where you kind of just kind of, you get the logistics of it and then do it your way. And if it's your way and it works and it looks good and you like the way it sounds and you like the way that it came off, then it worked. Uh, but in the meantime, what we've got to start doing is we've got to start marking this off. But there's one thing I've realized about drilling into any type of guitar, whether it be for a screw or for a panel or to put a pick guard on or to change something or to mount a tailpiece. The one thing I've realized about it is, is that that old measure twice, cut once thing, no. Measure like six times because if you're like me, your hand could slip and you kind of work it out to averages when you feel satisfied having an area taped off uh, that uh, you know exactly where to cut now you're gonna feel a lot more confident and it's just gonna come off really nice. check clearances. So go ahead and grab the guitar, go ahead and uh, check the recess, make sure that you've got appropriate clearances. Um, you know, you got to remember that working on guitars is kind of like making Italian food. The people who are doing it the best are the people who are constantly checking tolerances, constantly checking levels, and just making sure that everything is going according to plan. So don't be afraid to stop midway and check clearances, because if it fits, then you don't need to keep cutting. Okay, now another thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to drill a channel because at this point in time, there's actually no way to route the two wires uh, for the cut into this area. And uh, I'll show you in a little bit why that's necessary, why it's necessary to get in here instead of in here. Um, so what we've gotta do is we've gotta take a drill bit and then we've gotta actually drill a channel from this one to that one. And what you can do is you can take a drill and hold it on an angle where the bit is coming in sideways and then drill downward, and that'll have you protruding from the inside here. Okay, so we've got our recess routed out. Um, and yeah, I did it freehand, but I'm feeling okay about it. You know, there's a bit of a cleanup that's needed around this edge. Your best bet is to use a router cup. Um, but uh, doing this freehand is a little bit quicker and it can still be cleaned up and my hands are pretty steady so I feel confident that it came out okay. And if we're checking depth, what I know is is that from right there, if it's standing completely upright, that the edge of the nut is just at that uh, little ridge right there. So with this plate on top of it, right about there, uh, we're going to go ahead and drill a hole in this plate and make it so we can mount a switch. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and move back inside, do some cleanup work and start adding screws. Okay, so we've checked the plate. We've got a good flat mounting. Luckily enough, most of the warping that was taking place on this particular plate has actually been flattened out. I heated up the plate a little bit and kind of uh, gave it a little bit of manipulation with my hands and managed to make it a little concave on the bottom so that the screws would essentially pull this whole thing flat, kind of hoping it will flatten out a little bit over time. It's still got a little bit of a lift around the corners, but once again, that's consistent with the type of modifications we're doing here. It's obviously not factory, but at the same time, um, it is obvious that it's been put in by somebody who's got some competent, you know, function of electronics. So I kind of like it. It's, it's the middle of the road and anybody looking at this guitar in a few years, it's not going to be able to really figure out exactly when this type of modification was done. And the reason is, is because we're stepping outside of the typical aftermarket that you would find for guitar parts on eBay or on Reverb. And, uh, you know, we're repurposing things. This was a truss rod cover and uh, this is a high voltage um, momentary switch that we're then using as the kill. So these two things combined means that it uh, is going to give this guitar a little bit more of a unique turn, um, something that uh, doesn't jump out and bite you, something that's not offensive to the eyes, uh, but is functional and at the same time uh, kind, of, kind of adds an interesting turn to this particular guitar. Gives it one more thing that, that you would not find on any other model. Uh, but as far as fit and finish, I'm feeling pretty good about the way that that looks. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and heat up the soldering iron. We're going to tap in our two leads, start stringing them through to over there, and then we will connect them to the jack plate, and we're going to be pretty close to good to go. <laughs> there you have it like I said it's a quick project and it's something that you know you can tackle in an hour or two and uh, if you're not moving the switch off of uh, a compartmentalized area if you're not putting it in its own compartment if you are putting it under the pick guard then you could go ahead and just skip the spots where it's got me cutting in and, and doing routing and everything like that regardless though it's a lot of fun to do and I always like trying to put like an individual turn on any work even if it is something kind of a light modification uh, you know, just because these are our instruments, these are the things that we're carrying around. And, um, you know, they, they kind of become us in the same way that a uniform becomes us, in the same way that the house that we live in and the car that we drive, you know, um, they don't mean everything, but they are a reflection of us. So it's nice to have something like an instrument where you're using it for self-expression and then in the work it's self-expressing yourself even further. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I know I did, I like putting it together. Plus, to be brutally honest, I've been meaning to do that mod on my Strat for quite a long while. And, um, you know, somebody had actually piped in uh, just yesterday and was talking about this exact guitar and the earlier videos where we were building it and talking about, um, you know, I had mentioned in that video that my first real Fender guitar that was ever given to me was by my mom and it was a Strat and I had spent years trying to recreate it uh, and the reason was is because many years ago the guitar was stolen from me. I never got it back. Uh, I have not been able to find the same model 
Uh, and even when I had been able to come across a couple of very similar models, they never seemed to land the right way. They never seemed to play the way that that Strat did. Now that might be just because maybe I have rosy glasses. You know, we all tend to look back at our earliest instruments as something revered and, and something holy, but at the same time, if you remember correctly, those are the same instruments that went out of tune when we were playing shows in high school or in college or even younger. Um, so to answer that individual's question, does this guitar measure up? And the answer is yes, it, it absolutely does measure up. And it's the first Strat that I've had over many, many years that does. I've had probably 25 or 35 different Fender Stratocasters that I either built or bought over the last 20 or 30 years. Um, many of them uh, came along after that first guitar was stolen. So. I'm very happy to report that yeah this guitar is definitely doing the job and it sounds great and it plays wonderful and yeah it ain't worth a million bucks and and it's not a you know a historic 1959 or 1960 strat but it's mine and that's all that really matters when it shakes out this guitar is yours it's your guitar make it your own and uh you know don't be uh, don't be daunted by by modifications or anything like that if you're just getting started out and if you're not just getting started out and you've been working on it for a while then then hell yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. A bunch of you guys have been really uh, piling in and uh, it's been very encouraging watching the numbers on the channel, uh, much more so than I anticipated it would be. Uh, so thank you guys so much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to think about it. We've always got content like this coming across. And one of the best things about um, you know this channel, like I was mentioning in a previous video, it's not network television. It's great conversational opportunity here for us to, you know, for me to be able to learn from you guys on different tactics and different styles, or maybe it's preferential and maybe Maybe you just prefer to do it your own way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Have a beautiful afternoon. Go plug into something. Play loud. Uh, and if you've already installed the kill switch, then definitely play loud. Definitely listen to some Hendrix. Listen to some Rock on Tours. Listen to some White Stripes. Listen to some Alvin Lee. Some Ten Years After. Uh, there are a ton of artists that have used a lot of that stutter sound or those uh, those kill switches on multiple rigs that they had or, or just something that they used on a really influential record. Uh, you know, so go digging and, and find something. And sure, maybe when you play it, it won't sound exactly the same, but that's the best part because that's how we get new music. You know, we listen, we emulate, we're inspired by, we're influenced by, and we take that, we go out, and then we make it our own. Because you got to remember that even Hendrix himself was told by multiple people that he was playing wrong, who were then proven wrong themselves. Anyway, have a beautiful afternoon, and I'll see you guys next time.